Welcome to RV Quick Tips. Quick Tips. Hey guys, it's Barrett with the Gimby Camper. So this week's video was about another project that I decided to do the camper, and it's about adding a 15 amp power inlet to the camper. Now, a lot of you people are like, why the heck would you want to do that? Well, I want to tell you, my camper is a 50 amp camper. I only have one air conditioner. It's pre-wired for a second. And so I hardly ever need 50 amp service but it does get me like wondering sometimes if I need a little bit more power because most of the places that I go are only 30 amp. And so occasionally there's something that I wanna use a little bit more power for, like a plug-in heater or something like that. And I don't really wanna use the power from the camper. And so by adding a 15 amp power inlet, basically I have, I'm gonna make one outlet go to this power inlet and so essentially anything that i plug into that outlet is going to be like plugging it into the post outside on the 15 amp breaker and it's not going to affect my power usage on the camper at all specifically the reason that i'm doing it is to add a portable air conditioner with the built-in heater which we'll get into in another video in this video i just want to specifically look at the power inlet the steps to do that in the mistakes that were made possibly. The things that you need for this is a power inlet. The one that I used, I'm gonna put in a link down here from Amazon. You also need some 12 gauge Romex wire and an outlet. And you're gonna need an outlet box and an outlet cover. The outlet box that I got was for a previous construction. And so instead of like having the, the nails where you nail it to the stud, it has little wings and screws. So all you do is cut out a hole in whatever you're putting it in and then tighten the screws down, which have little uh, wings that attach to them that fold out and they just clamp it to the wall right there. So we'll go over that in a minute. Obviously the most um, worrisome part of this is drilling a hole in the side of your camper. And I'm here to tell you that it doesn't always go like you have planned. This is obviously one of those things that you want to do the whole measure twice, cut once, because you're putting a hole in your camper, okay? And this is not for the faint of heart. So I'll start by saying that my power inlet said to use a one and three quarter inch hole saw. And so I got, I removed the panel on the inside. I looked around the main power inlet for my 50 amp service. And uh, I had about eight inches above it and I had about six and a half, seven inches below it. And so I could go anywhere in that area and feel like I wasn't gonna have an issue. I chose to go below it because it did have a backer board already there. And I figured I'd probably need to install another one if I went above it. And so I did go below it and I had about six and a half to seven inches there. After looking at it and measuring from the power inlet outside, I realized that this was going to be right in the area where the aluminum J channel comes up to the fiberglass. And it looked like I was gonna have enough space if I put it right below the molding on that J channel, that that would help with water runoff a little bit and it would look good. And so I decided to do that. I will say that I looked back, I didn't have the directions with me. I looked back at the uh, Amazon link where I bought this and it said on the picture to use a one and three quarter inch hole saw. So I got a one and three quarter inch hole saw. I actually used, it's got a cover that's a gasket behind it, which has a flap that comes down over the top and goes back into the power inlet in order to make it waterproof when you're not using it. And I took that off and I used that for a uh, marker to mark exactly where I wanted this hole to go. And it had the circle for the everything there. And then I just found the center of that circle and that's where I was gonna make that hole. You could also tell by reaching up under the J channel that it wasn't near the bottom of the box on the inside, which would be the floor. And so I felt like this was an okay thing to do. It's at this point that I got the drill and I actually said on camera, wish me luck. Wish me luck. I could have used a little bit more. As I was using that drill and I was drilling through that J channel, as soon as that J channel popped off, I saw half of a moon of styrofoam and half of a moon of aluminum. So 
I did get right where the aluminum framing was and that is definitely not what I wanted to do. So I kept thinking about it. I called an RV tech friend of mine and we decided that, you know, that three quarters of an inch basically of aluminum channel wasn't providing that much support after the framing and the uh, Luan and everything, the cabinets, everything was there kind of supporting each other. And we decided to just go ahead and make the hole there. On the inside, the hole came out exactly where I thought it would, which would be right above the floor. And everything worked fine. The next problem that I ran into is apparently if you look at the directions that come in the box, they say to use a two inch hole saw instead of one and three quarter inch hole saw. And so my power inlet didn't fit in the hole. It did fit down in there, but there's some threading on there. Uh, which depending on what you're putting it on might actually help get you a tighter seal, but it would not, I couldn't get it to like screw into this. And so basically I took a Dremel tool with the sanding drum on it and I just kept going around that hole until I got probably another eighth of an inch of it off. And then I was able to put that power inlet back in there. So before I did anything else, I went ahead and attached a piece of Romex to the power inlet. Luckily, the panel that covers the area where the power inlets come into the camper, there's just a panel there, it's behind a cabinet door. And so I decided this is where I wanted my outlet. And so I left uh, about an extra foot of Romex on there. I probably got about two and a half feet. And that way it just kinda, I can pull that panel off and I can move it out if I need to and I have room to do that, but it's not real tight. And that's what I was going for. I used an oscillating saw in that panel just to, I marked out where the outlet box was. And then I went back and used the oscillating saw to cut that out. And then I got a screwdriver, tightened up those wing nuts on that uh, power box and ran the wire through there, stripped the wire, wired the outlet just like you would any normal household outlet. I'm not gonna give you tips on that. I'm not a professional by the way, so you do this at your own risk if you decide to do anything. I gotta throw that in there. Um, but I got the outlet wired up, I put the cover on it, and then I screwed the uh, panel back to the wall. And it looks like it was made that way, which is what I was going for. After I did that, I took some Kim Link Clear, which um, Steve down at Shelburne RV said that's the best sealant to use for about anything. And so I took some of that and I put it on the back of that gasket that holds the cover. I put it on the front of the gasket so that way when I put the whole power inlet box in there, it had sealant all around there. It, of course, it squeezed out on the edges and then I took my finger and smoothed it out and put a little bit around all four of those screws and I feel like it's pretty weatherproof. But just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna look next time we do one of those uh, leak tests with the Siltec because I'm gonna go have that done every year or two down there at Shelburne RV, because we already found four leaks on brand new camper. Water damage is not something I'm prepared to deal with on something that's this large of an investment. So that's all that is for the, uh, so that's all there is for a power inlet. Now with that, you wanna use a 12 gauge extension cord, no more than probably 25 feet to the post, and that should have you taken care of. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.